Hey, what is going on YouTube? These are the Proline Trenchers and these tires are a lot wider than your stock tires. I will say though that because I'm running larger tires, there's even more of a need for me to really maximize getting everything that I can out of my servo. Um, so as you guys know, I'm going to be installing a um, external BEC, and that's gonna pump my voltage for my system that goes toward my servo up to 7.4 volts. The first upgrade that I did to my steering was going in and putting those snap rings into the servo saver, which I actually had somebody request in one of my comments on my video about that servo saver if I had any footage of the before and after of what the vehicle looks like before I put those snap rings in and then after. And so I'm gonna show that to you guys right now. As you can see, uh, there's a significant difference in how fast I'm able to turn as well as just how much more it's turning. Um, however, that is not taking full advantage of 7.4 volts to this Savox 1210SG. So, um, I've been talking about putting this BEC into my RC car for a while now, but the reason why I haven't done it yet, and I apologize, is because I've run into a weird set of problems with either my servo or my ESC, and it could be because I'm not giving this servo enough juice. Or it could just be that the servo is going bad, or the servo has gone to a point where it just needs more juice to function properly. So I was doing a little bit of research. I sent an email out to Arma and I finally got a response from them and they said that they think it probably is a, a servo that's going out. And so instead of completely replacing the servo, I'm going to install the BEC, but not everybody wants to buy, not everybody may want to purchase a $40 BEC and another $25 um, programmer for the BEC. You may be having issues with your Savox or your stock servo with it glitching. And it turns out that the, the servos, um, th there's a little device called a glitch buster. And believe it or not, Savox doesn't even sell their servos anymore without a glitch buster. The glitch buster is a little tiny diode that basically plugs into your, into your, into an open spot on your receiver. And from what I understand, it's like a capacitor that kind of stores energy or provides balanced energy to your servo. Um, it doesn't provide more energy. That's what a BEC does. But this glitch buster kind of is a capacitor in a sense that kind of just helps mitigate and keep a level kill amount of energy going towards the servo. And some people, when they plug these glitch busters in, you immediately hear your servo stop like making noises and stop twitching. So some t sometimes when you plug in your, or when you turn on your vehicle and you listen to your servo, you hear like a or like twitching noises. You might even see your tires twitching a little bit. As soon as you plug in this glitch buster, it goes quiet and it helps your servo perform better. So I purchased a glitch buster. Now granted, I'm not gonna need one because a BEC or an external BEC right here is actually a glitch buster 2.0, if you will. It is also a glitch buster, but it also, when installed, plugs in and takes power from your batteries to up the power amperage to your system, specifically your servo. So while I don't really need a glitch buster because I'm going to be installing this BEC, for you guys, I still decided that I would purchase one, install that first to see if it actually takes care of my issue and then after that install the BEC. 
So that's what I'm gonna do. And I should get the Glitch Buster in the mail either tomorrow or Monday. So you're looking at two or three days before I have that. So I'll throw that Glitch Buster in and see if it solves the problems I've been having with my servo. And if it does, great, then I won't need it. I'll pull it out, I'll put the, I'll put the BEC in and I'll probably just send the glitch poster out to somebody that you know supports my channel or whatever. So I'll do that. Anyway, um, ultimately the point of this video was to show you my new tires, tell you that I'm excited about them, show you some footage of the before and after of what it looks like after you install the snap rings into your servo saver and talk a little bit about this glitch buster and the how I'm pre-staging it to the actual BEC. And so notice down here, take a look what I have sitting out. These right here are pistons for your shot. I am actually going to do some experimenting. You'll notice how this says one, four. This one says one, two. And this one says one, three. I, I believe the one threes are on all four of my shocks right now. That comes stock from Arma. You'll notice that the hole size in the 1.4 is slightly bigger than the 1.3 and the 1.2 is the smallest. I want to, I'm going to basically do some experimenting because I want to be able to drop my, my RC car from, you know, chest height, have it hit the ground and not let it bottom out. Because I've installed, you know, the M2C chassis, aluminum bracers, aluminum, you know, um, stock shock towers, aluminum shock braces, you know, servo mounts, aluminum diff houses, aluminum um, suspension mounts. Because I've got all this added weight, my vehicle tends to bottom out a lot easier. So I'm going to be changing up my pistons to the smaller hole. And I'm also going to be installing some orange techno springs. As well, I'm also going to be upping my weight of oil from 80 weight to 100 weight. And that should make a significant difference in my shocks. Granted, I know there, there is a certain level of uh, like expected body slap that is normal. But I feel like because of all the weight I've put on my vehicle, it's a little bit overkill. Especially after I tank out my body with uh, Shugu and mesh, I'm gonna be adding a lot of weight to my body as well. So that's one of the things I want you guys to watch out for. Also, I do have a video that I'm gonna be dropping on this little device, stay tuned for that. They're pretty cool. That was just a little you know, what's coming on my channel. So if you're not subscribed yet, subscribe. So anyway guys, I really appreciate you watching my videos. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. And right now, hit the like button on this video. I really appreciate it when people hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel, subscribe. Check out my video library. Also, take a look at the description. I've got a fully comprehensive library of parts, upgrades, recommendations, basically all listed down below in my, um, in my description. And every one of my videos is always gonna have that list. So anytime you're kind of looking to buy a part, if you want to kind of jump right into a very specific like library of needed parts, then you can just pop into one of my videos and open up the description. Anyway, so check that out. All right, guys, until next time, East Tactics out.